Hola, ¿cómo está? Mi nombre es Andy. Um, <coughs> me duele la garganta. Um, uh, hi. Okay, there we go. Uh, sorry, a uh, little language change there. That was, huh. Anyway, um, we'll actually get back to that language change later. But for now, I have a connect question for us, okay? So let's do this. Let's check out our connect question this week, which is, if you could own one thing, what would it be? Let's talk. All right. Somebody maybe said a TV. Somebody said maybe uh, their Xbox, a trampoline, a bicycle, uh, something. Uh, for me, if I could have one thing and that's it, it would be my Bible. My Bible. I would have it. There's so much good history in there. So many amazing things that we see God redeem and do. Uh, it really shows us how God is worthy of our worship. It's amazing. Let's do this. Now, let's shift gears. Let's take a look. Remember, let's try that home. You ready? Look. Got to make the weird face with it. And listen to this week's memory verse. I guess the ceiling is probably, I don't know, is that 10 feet? Maybe. I guess it's 10. What do you think? How tall do you think the roof is in this room? How tall is the roof or the uh, the ceiling in your house? Um, hmm. if, I, if I had to get up there, I don't know. Maybe I could get a table. Uh, ooh, I could put that chair on the tip. Ooh, there's a ladder. I could get the ladder and climb. Anyway, um, many years ago, many years ago, uh, this is actually after. We, we kind of fast forward after the Garden of Eden, okay? And th there were a lot of people. There were a lot of people on the earth. Let's take a look at this timeline. So here we are now, and in the big God story, these people decided they wanted to build a tower. They wanted to build a big tower all the way up to the heavens. They wanted to build this so big that... They're like, you know what, God? We don't need you. We, we can build to you. And you see, these people, just as Adam and Eve did, these people began more and more to disobey God. Now, I'm going to use some Legos here, and I want you to know that every word I say, disobey, we're going to build something. So we see that they disobeyed God. And as they continue to disobey God, they turned away, turn away, from what God wanted them to do. Now, these people, they they worshipped um, these fake gods. They would take trees and carve them into things that looked like people. They looked like animals and they worshipped them. Uh, the name of this town was Shinar. So they continued to try to build their way to heaven and disobey God. And they were like, you know what, God, we're better than you. We're going to prove it by building a tower all the way up to where you are. Now, as they continued this, they said, you know what, we're actually going to worship these false gods. We're going to worship this God and say, oh, tree, make it rain. What? That didn't make sense, but they did it. So as they continued to do that, they worshiped these false gods. And in fact, they actually started to worship themselves. They thought, you know what? I, I'm, I'm better than God. I can build this. Look at all the things we can accomplish together. Me. They began to worship themselves too. Now, people wanted to build this huge tower. They wanted it to look a little something like this. This is actually called a ziggurat. Take a look at this image. Now, this tall tower or ziggurat that they were building was ultimately going to reach all the way to the clouds is what they wanted. Now, check out this verse. It says, God said, all these people are united and speak the same language. That's why they can do all this. Now they'll be able to do anything they plan. Come on, let's go down and mix up their language. They will not be able to understand one another. Hmm. So imagine that. 
imagine they were all together. They're building this together. They, you know, they may take a lunch break. You got guys working up here, guys on the lunch break. They're sitting here, they're eating, and they're like, man, you know, that's really good. And then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, gracias por la comida. Es muy delicioso. ¿Qué? ¿Qué? ¿Hola? ¿Qué? Ay, ay, ay. Or they're up there working and they're like, hey, pass me that brick. Or in French they could say, donnez moi un brick. Uh, huh? Do you think they'd be able to continue building that? Do you think they'd still be able to work together if they couldn't understand each other anymore? Well, see, that's what happened. God went, God changed all of their languages around and they quit. They're like, we can't build anything anymore. We can't do this anymore. So they stopped building. They stopped building this big temple. And actually the town or, or that place was actually called Babel. So as they continue to try to build, I'm going to slide this over here. As they continued to try to build, they just couldn't. And so they left and they called it Babel. Now, after God had scattered these people all over the earth, God revealed a plan to send a redeemer to fix the broken relationship with God. Remember, we talked about that last week. Now, God found a man. And this man, God had a big plan for him, and this big plan involved something that seemed impossible for this man. Now, this man, his name was Abram, or as they would say it then, they would call him Abram. Try that, Abram, or Abram, if you can't roll your eyes, that's my Abram. So, God had a big plan for Abram. So, with this big plan, God said this. God said to Abram, now Abram, he lived in a place called Ur with his nephew Lot and his wife, Sarah. So they lived in this place called Ur, and here's what God said. God spoke to Abram, and he said, The Lord has said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Now, God had a special promise for Abram. He promised him that he would have this, this new nation or this new uh, group of people. And he said, with this new nation, I'm going to give you worship me and me alone. The one true God, Yahweh, worship me. So Abram, Abram, uh, Abram, he followed what God said and he went on a journey. He walked through and tried to find a place to go. And God said, this is it right here. It's a town called Canaan. Now in Canaan, God told Abram, he said, look, look up. Do you see these stars? I'm going to make your descendants or your family members, like your grandson, your son, great-grandson, great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great until you get tired of saying the word great-grandchildren. They're going to be so many, you won't be able to count them. They're going to be a mighty nation. And that is my promise. Or So descendants is the next part, as we said, descendants. And that was God's promise. So God made a promise to Abram. Now, this is a huge promise. This is something that we see continue throughout the Old Testament. We see this promise that he made to Abram, Abraham. We see this promise go throughout the entire Old Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, we see when something amazing happens, they take some rocks and they build something called an altar. They build an altar and he built an altar there and he worshiped God. He said, God, you are wonderful. You are powerful. You are mighty. God, you are worthy of worship. So there he made a promise to God. God actually changed his name in that moment. He said, look, right now you are called Abram, but I'm going to change your name to Abraham or Abraham. He says, now you are going to be known as Abraham. Now, we see that Abraham will later start a family. And we see that family grow and grow and grow. And through that, we see the Redeemer. 
We see through that family, the promise that he made, we see it to David. We see the promise that he later makes to David. He says, listen, one through your descendants is gonna be the Messiah. He's gonna be the one who sits on the throne forever. And we know that it's Jesus. He's that promised redeemer. And that's why Abraham, Abraham, that's why he worshiped. Because God is worthy of worship. And that's our ponder point this week. Let's say it together. You ready? God is worthy of worship. One more time. God is worthy of worship. Good job. Man, I'm excited to see what happens next week. Tune in and we'll see you then.